This is a, uh, my favorite is Mars Market. Um, in, in some way, I feel like we, as a Mars society, have the appropriateness of, we've been doing it for 20 years now, we should probably come up with a commercial version of all these things. Um, and, and part of it is commercially because that's where the money is. Uh, you know, it's not like we can all pool our cash together and all of a sudden send people to Mars. But if you slowly throughout the day piece together a bunch of pennies and a bunch of nickels and a bunch of dimes, we will be able to either set up a fund that you can take a loan out and go to Mars for, or you can study the things that need to be studied here on Earth for people to go to Mars. So the, the concept is Mars market, and I, I say market, but it's market, you know, it's spelled with a Q and just a fun tagline to use. However, we're up in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if anybody has ever dealt with somebody from Michigan, but we use our hand to describe where we're from. And uh, fortunately, <clears throat> the hand is below what we normally know of. So this is the lower peninsula with Detroit here, Lansing, and some other cities. And then this is the Upper Peninsula, whole nother place. I mean, we, we have no highways, no interstate highways. We have maybe 500, yard, or 500 miles between major cities. Each one of those little coins is a major city. So Marquette being in the center, right on the bay of Lake Michigan, or Lake Superior, is a great little spot to find, I guess, on a map. Um, if you're flying, the, the imagination is, if you're flying from a craft from Mars and you see a bunch of Earth, where do you want to land? And no offense, but this seems pretty easy to find. So does Cape, Cape Canaveral, but this seems pretty easy. Same time, we have right now temperature at, um, I say, 59 degrees. Okay, so I'm not used to this whole heat. I'm, I'm really, this is, this is really <laughs> outrageous, and I'm sorry I'm going to take this off now. <laughs> Just chilling out. Um, I, am, I am not one to spend a lot of time in warm weather. Same time, I'm very acclimated to the concept of 60 below zero. Um, Mars, average temperature kind of stuff, where we might not have snow because it's so cold. Um, so in general, I'm trying to promote the city of Marquette because we need industry, we need concepts, we need things that um, are going to be in the future. Right now it's an iron town. Uh, we have a, a really, really large um, iron ore industry. So using that, using the, the techniques that we have acquired and have perfected through the iron industry, we can collaborate, I guess is the best way to put it, with some of these mining companies. Um, I, I don't assume we, you and I, in this room right now, are gonna be operating dozers and uh, you know cranes on Mars, but somebody is. And that somebody is somebody that's supposed to be experienced in the mining companies. So you only get experience if you work in something like this on Earth. And then you get promoted to go to Mars. Or then you decide, hey, you know what? I've got five years to spend doing something that I don't know what to do. Let's go to Mars. I'll do my job here, up there. I'll clear some, uh, uh, what you call it, terrain. I'll make a landing pad. I'll put in the cement. But in some way, we need a spot to train those technicians, train those engineers in the specifics of Mars. Um, the gravity level, the uh, oxygen content, the nitrogen content. Basically, I was told from my uh, mining friends, when you do explosives, you have to know the oxygen content of the actual rock. You could blow up a whole cavern if you don't do your due diligence, I guess is the best way to put it. So in that way, there's a lot of things that we need to, as a Mars society, 
promote in the specifics of actual in, you know, industry here on Earth. And I'm looking forward to the collaboration. What I want to do here is talk about how we, as a society, have now been doing this for 25 years or 20 years to have a resource where you could go. If you're a, a three-year experience um, driller or if you love you know, turning up the soil and making roads, where do you go? I mean, do you go to MIT? Do you go to NASA? Do you go to any of these main uh, branches that we know of? Or do you come to something like this? Where you say, hey, look, my company um, uses the, the John Deere tractor. <clears throat> what can that, I mean, I assume we're not going to have a John Deere tractor. At the same time, we should probably have a John Deere tractor up there. <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those things. If we have a Komatsu bulldozer here, we need a Komatsu bulldozer up on Mars. I don't know how we get it there. I don't know how it happens. But eventually, if, if we need to flatten terrain, we need to make a room and a way to do that. So my, my concept here is Mars Market is to say, we here on Earth will produce products that either help somebody on Mars or directly assists those going to Mars. Uh, so I'm gonna hit start here on the play now. Uh, and I'm just gonna let these go through. These are all just concepts of uh, products that might and might not work. Uh, most of them, I don't want to take anybody's intellectual property. So a lot of these, I, a lot of these might have a tag like this, but at the same time, I'm sorry if, if I don't give you representation. These are not my ideas. I want to promote other ideas. And I think we as a society have the opportunity to present a, a host, a place that we can actually do these ideas. Um, so some of these are literally things that are being done right now. Four people wearing helmets, wearing, uh, or riding around on motorcycles. These things, these windmills, these uh, headsets here. I'm gonna try not to talk to the slides. But the concept is all of these are products. How do we make them? How do we as a society make profit off of them? Uh, it could be collaboration. It could be straight up design and, and production. But somehow the Mars, rover is going to need materials can we as the Mars Society be the middleman for those materials if you need 30,000 bolts to make a starship we will provide 30,000 bolts we'll find them somehow we'll do this somehow but we'll find you those bolts the other concept is how do we as a society help those who don't want to go to Mars assist us in going to Mars. Um, so one thought is to, out of the conversations that we've had here in this room this week, uh, was to look at the financial, like futures, a futures market, a securities market. Um, how do you promote a plan that takes 50 years to establish uh, a base on Mars, and yet you have 50 years of expenses? Um, I mean, to be fair, we, we need toilets, we need toilet paper, we need actual shaving cream, we need, you know, like, your deodorants, no offense, but the HVAC systems are not going to be powerful enough to take care of our expenses. Those are all, though, all of them, though, are profit margins. And I, I mean this in a way that, so I'm from Michigan, and follow me on the numbers here, but I'm from Michigan where we have 10 cents on the dot or 10 cents per can as a returnable. Now an aluminum can being returned, we'll, we'll blow it up to the sense of, there is about 70,000 cans of aluminum on the Mars 2020 rover. So if we as a market place, can have recycled aluminum ready to go to a research station or a production center or, and granted, don't get me wrong, I understand there's already companies out there doing this. Let's collaborate with them though. Let's make this an effort where we say, out of those 70,000 cans, that's $7,000 that we've got in our 
in our pocket, somebody donated to our actual projects. Um, that money can be used for other research projects that promote the concept of going to Mars. My point is, let us, the Mars Society, be the medium and the middleman for any project. I mean any project that goes to Mars. SpaceX, let's collaborate. Uh, Bigelow, let's collaborate. Um, Blue Origin, let's collaborate. I don't care what it takes. If you need people, if you need products, if you need stuff, let's do it. Let's make that the center point that we do this in. Um, so a lot of these are the actual place I'm thinking of. Uh, in my town, Marquette, Michigan, we have a old hospital uh, that's not really old. I mean, these buildings are all redesigned in 1989. So we have nothing to do with it. There's no industry coming into our town to, to uh, I guess, reuse this location. I'm pointing this out, not necessarily because of Marquette, but I would love to see us as a center or as a society create a place that we can all go to on a Thursday afternoon in February. Uh, I want to go to there for three weeks and maybe study something or help somebody out do some studies. Uh, the beauty of being a hospital is that there's already radiation rooms. There's already lead filled uh, barriers to whatever kind of contamination we can come up with. Uh, so we don't need to build new ones. And I guess in that sense, it's a, it's a good promotion for a location like this, where we can actually use those rooms that are used for cancer studies in cancer studies. I mean, we can actually say, this is the radiation level of this environment. Um, this streetscape, this is uh, kind of what surprised me. I want to actually, I don't think we're going to have domes on Mars. No offense, but we're humans. I, I don't know. Somehow there's, there's just, we build squares. <laughs> we just do. I mean, I, I don't know how, but in caves, we build squares. Um, so anyways, going back to it, <clears throat> if we can, in, in the Mars Society, um, complex, create mechanisms for money-making endeavors. I never really said that before, but wow, that sounded really good. So how do we save money? How do we, <laughs> how do we make this um, a way to go? And yesterday I was sitting through a couple of uh, speeches about there is a, a futures market. Uh, there is a securities market. There is a risk market, for that matter. Um, all of those are on the product and personnel individual timeline. So if I decide to go to Mars, I've got 20 years to prepare and come back to. Um, do I rent houses? Do I sell my house while I'm here on Mars? Or while I'm on Earth? Or do I, do I rent it out? All of those things are the unknowns that we haven't yet experienced because we haven't sent anybody to Mars. Um, I, I truly feel like we, we are on the crust of it, but how do you get somebody who just walks off the subway and says, hey, you know what? I'm interested in going to see somewhere else, explore somewhere new. Um, the thought is, how do you get them <clears throat> to help us? Uh, and so one of the ways is to say buy stocks in the separate companies that might happen. Another way is to buy the, the securities that might happen. Uh, I don't know, we're all at the, at the age now where we probably have a 401k or some sort of um, retirement fund being set up. Could we do something similar to that for the 12 year olds who are coming out of eighth grade? Um, how do we get them to not necessarily go to Mars, but help us or think about it or, or suggest that, hey, you know what, I've got this credit card and instead of getting free airline miles, I've got $400 to go to Mars with or I've got $400 to invest in companies that are going to Mars. So I might be able to make a whole lot of money helping other people and in that sense, how do we get Amazon? How do we get Starbucks? And how do we get Target on board? And I mean that, I trust me, I hate corporations. However, 
they're the ones who have the standardized mechanisms to make money. Uh, Starbucks, we could easily do a one penny return on all your cups or all your plastics, and we, the Mars Society, resells it. Um, we could easily be the one who sells the uh, excess of cups and mugs or coffee that Starbucks has. At the same time, I love coffee and I expect to have coffee on Mars. If I ever go, <laughs> we better have tons of it coming with us. Four years is a long time to have no coffee. In that sense, we need collaboration. And corporations don't collaborate with individuals. They take over individuals. Um, and in that sense, the Mars Society is the overall individual that these corporations will deal with. Um, and those are lawyers. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not a lawyer. I don't really want to read the legalese. But if Starbucks says it's going to cost $18 million to send 20 tons of coffee, we'll figure out how to do it. But damn it, I want that coffee. At the same time, what product can we make or what manufacturing system can we make here on Earth that gets carried over to Mars that makes water? Uh, and that's where I see our real profit margin is the, the development of both here on Earth of, of systems that are more efficient. But again, Honda already has a lawnmower that is robotically controlled or remotely controlled. Can we get Honda to get a dozer on Mars? Same size, tiny little butt that moves up and down. But how do we get that to be a, a collaborative effort between Honda, the Mars Society, and whatever individual is riding it or driving it or um, maintaining or maintaining it? We have a. We, I guess my thought is we have a long way to go to go from nonprofit to for profit. But for-profit isn't necessarily you and I are each going to be millionaires. That'd be great. I'd love to set up a system that does that. But the for-profit margin is how do we get the $9 billion to give as a prize to somebody that could actually get us to Mars quicker? Um, the thought is anything that might help us along, we need to promote. And we need to promote it in a way that corporations promote it. Uh, I used to be an HTML dev the designer, um, so web development, um, graphic design. I noticed or I witnessed the whole acclimation of talent where you go, hey, you're doing great, but how about I give you $75,000 to work for me and no longer are you doing the work for circle.com, but you're doing it for uh, one of their competitors. The acquisition of talent is something that we need to stop, I guess, cold in its tracks and retain here under the Mars Society blanket. Um, I, I, I want to promote the concept of nonprofit at the same time because of education, because of the thing of, hey, a three-year-old right now growing up is going to have to learn what it takes to go to Mars. That's just going to be in their science projects, you know, just part of, hey, you want to launch a rocket? This is how much energy it takes. That alone, though, is only at the 10 year old level. What happens when they get to be 20 and they're like, hey, you know what? I, I got to go to school somewhere. I got to go to college somewhere. I got to go make a buck somewhere. Can we, as the Mars Society, offer them an option? And in that sense, I would love to say yes. And this Mars market is a way to say, if you have one idea that you want to promote or, or manipulate or help with, but you can't get an MIT, you can't get to USC, you can't get to whatever college there might be, here's a place that you can come for six months, six weeks, eight years, whatever it might take, and we have a place that you can work on your project. So a lot of it is collaboration. Um, Sorry, I'm watching the time here, but so I work at the newspaper up in Marquette, Michigan, uh, and <clears throat> we apparently are in the market for a spaceport. Now, I don't know. There are so many spaceports. <laughs> I know there are, so we're, we're going down that line, but one, one paragraph that this guy pointed out was, 
Northern Michigan is strategically positioned for a polar sh orbit satellite launch facility. Low density population, extensive restricted airspace, interstate highway system accessible, uh, engineering and manufacturing capacity. Now, I'm not saying Marquette is the only place to do this. I would love to see it done in uh, Longwood, Col or Colorado, or uh, St. George, uh, Utah, so that we have shorter launches. But like somehow, let's collaborate with all of these different Mars analog stations with something like this. If we launch a rocket, let's land something at one of these stations. The desert research station needs supplies. Toilet paper, water, food, whatever medicines there might be. How do we launch a rocket to do that? Um, because we're talking about launching rockets to Mars and leaving them there or sending them back. How do we get that perfected is the best way to put it. And to do that, we need an ongoing effort between companies like Target, where you say, hey, Target, we need you to have one SpaceX uh, Starship devoted to nothing but cargo. And all the cargo that these people need, if there are 100 people, if there are 10 people, if there are 500 people, are going to be packed into this one Starship. Instead of us taking all the cash and all the money and all the expertise to do that, how do we work with these corporations that already have, the best way to put it is a 100 year debt limit. You know, how do we do it so that it's not just, oh, 10 years, here's my return on investment. Uh, how do we do it so that 50 years, you're not asking as a bank, where's my money? Um, these are all things, again, for lawyers. I'm not really going to promote that kind of concept, but the Mars credit card, where each one of us could be using a credit card and getting miles or putting money into a fund somewhere, could be a way that we collaboratively assist others who haven't been born yet. Um, I would love to put, a, I don't have kids, sorry, I don't have a family. I would love to be able to put away a fund, maybe $50,000, devoted to somebody's study of how to get us to Mars faster. Just that, just, I don't care about what you do on the Mars, I don't care what you think, but if you can make the rocket go faster, here's a way to do it, here's a prize to do it, here's a uh, method to do it, and try to do it. I'm not saying this is the only place to go, I'm actually saying, how do you get a 50-year-old plumber to say, I'm done doing plumbing in my parents' basement, and I would love to help somebody on Mars. How do I get a um, creative designer to say, look, I'm never leaving my, my couch, but I would love to help collaborate and communicate with whatever process needs to happen on Mars. Um, the, the idea here is how do we make money so that we can use that money? Um, each one of us, the Mars card is, sorry, I used to be, able to read off a script, but the Mars card. Earlier today, I was thinking about it. If we use it every day for every kind of expense, could we earn enough money to pay for this uh, vacation? Personally, it's five grand out of my pocket to come here and to visit and to, and to do these speeches. I'm, not, I'm okay with that. But at $11 an hour, it takes a full year to save up the money. If I had a credit card that I was able to use instead of AAA miles or American Airlines miles, could I use it towards Mars projects? Could I also use that small amount of money to make a profit off of one of these projects that are in the, the uh, sorry, each one of these is what I want to promote. Each one of these projects in this, the Marspedia thing, the, the speeches about how we can get uh, humans to come back from us. Each one of them need to be explored a little bit more. And I would like to have us provide the cash to allow people to do that. Um, and this is just one way to make the, the system work in the way that we have working right now. I mean, granted, it would be great to go to a government somewhere and say, hey, Singapore, you want to pay a bunch of money for us to go to Mars? Let's do it. Same time, why not Singapore offer some assistance to this kind of project where we say the Mars Society group, profit margin commercial group, 
is able to work with Alibaba and say any projects that somebody wants to put an extra 1% on their, their billing process can go to these funds. Um, in that sense, I'm really looking forward to the, the next adventure, but I don't really look forward to the government control of the next adventure. I, you know, I would love to see us as individuals make our own government, make our own financial planning, make our own uh, group decisions based on that. And again, a 401k plan for Mars Society individuals could benefit the Mars Society because you have securities, you have risk, you have the ability to take out debt with a payment plan. Um, I don't plan on, if I go to Mars, or if my kid, my friend's kid goes to Mars, I don't expect them to pay for the gas or the fuel or the air on Mars. I do expect somebody to figure it out. But that's where I think the small business, the, the collaboration with larger businesses will help out and, and make it so that, okay, we're going to make a lot of water on Mars so we can have a sound. Okay, we're going to make a lot of... Uh, chickens on Mars so we can have eggs, so that we can have bread. But the bread is a whole other scientific concept. I mean, how much yeast do you use? Where do you use it? How much water do you use? Where do you put it? These are all things that I look forward to, but I also think funding of it should not be individual. We can do it as a society, we can do it as a group, we can do it as a, a whole world if that's the matter, but somehow when you buy something off of Amazon, Jeff Bezos and uh, Blue Origin should be part of our development. We should be able to help them. They should be able to help us uh, in five years. We could have a place where instead of coming to USC where there's uh, alumni events and football games and no offense, but I got distracted last night. <laughs> LA's a big town. It's, there's a lot of things I'm not used to up in this UP area. Like, there's traffic down here that I've never seen. <laughs> at the same time, would it be neat where we don't go to a different place, but we go to our own place? This is the place. Those are the rooms that we hang out in, that we call home, that we decide, hey, you know what? The third, fifth, tenth, or twelfth floor. In a town the size of Marquette, which has 25,000 people, residents, uh, there's a university, which holds about 9,000 people. And, sorry, that's the largest wooden dome in the world, by the way. Uh, thank you. So anyways, I would love to see us all collaborate in Marquette, Michigan. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, two questions. Yeah, Apparently. okay. I already know what the most valuable thing in Marquette is. <laughs> Me? Thanks. <laughs> no. The, the most valuable thing in Marquette is collective wisdom. And if I was going to send a scraper to Mars, I would want a guy from Marquette to be operating it. So Thank you. How do we make that connection? Because he knows what's going to break. What could be more valuable than that? I, oh, I completely agree. And that, that's the point is we need to go to a place that isn't 90 degrees in, in you know, daylight time. We need to go someplace that's negative five. Uh, the temperature is a really big factor. The cold, is, the isolation is a really huge factor. Uh, and I do, I think, I don't know if anybody worked with people from the Keweenaw and Michigan Tech, but there's some tough people up there and we're a little soft when we're down in Marquette. But, those guys know what they're doing. Get out of the way. No, 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 no thank you. Keep, um, keep 